everyone, welcome to my channel. And today I will be showing you how to build one of these. This is a simple circuit and how to run one of them with your DC voltage supply. So let's get started. So here I am with my Hiptonic Bars Kit. This is right here. And I will, or basically we, will do this. Yay! What will, what will you need? So what you will need is soldering iron set to 400 degrees right there. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty blind. I am. A mat. A flexible mat that doesn't burn when you put your soldering iron to it. See, it doesn't burn. There's nothing on it. And solder. You can get any type if you want, but and some flux. Is this flux? Yeah. It's it's flux. I kind of melted it. Um Yeah, don't melt it and don't leave your soldering iron on top of it again. I accidentally melted it, but it's supposed to look something like this. You know, clean, very clean. What else you need is your hands. Ta-da! I got hands. My fingers. Scissors to open the bag. Boom. And even a power supply, if you need one, actually. You don't for this one, but sometimes you might just need it. So I'll just put this away for now. Bye. Um, so let's just get started. Let's just start cutting this thingy. And let's go. So what I cut from is from the side. I don't know if you can see, but I'm cutting this right now. I'm cutting it from the side. You can rip it too. And just throw everything down. Come on, get out. Those are trash. There. Here's my how to build, or even a giant how to build paper. It says there's actually a list, parts list. This is pretty rare, actually. I've never seen one of those. And there's also what is this? A assembly instruction. It has a diagram here for how it's supposed to be, but I don't need that because this is easier, right? You know what I mean? This is my, I don't know how many there are inside this, but this is basically a thing that you plug into this. It's basically, it basically lights up here. It lights up slowly, it makes light. So I'll just take it out of the thing, slash bag. Mm, I'll show you what it is. This is a light that I just said, put it there. This is a integrated circuit holder and it holds this, which is an integrated circuit. Can you see? This is the holder. It can be as long as those, or as short as these. These are the resistors. Pretty tiny. Finger for skill. And this is my potentiometer. Not mine. How do I show it? I don't know if you can see it, but there is a knob in there, somewhere. This is also like a adapter, like there's no actual name for it, but it plugs into a 9 volt, which I don't know where I have it, but I have it somewhere. It plugs into here and the other end plugs into the circuit board. This is your board, this is where all your main parts are going to go into. It just goes in there and not really there, but okay. That's, that's basically all you need and, oh, little thing that came with trash. I don't need it. So you will need your soldering iron set to 400 degrees and um, even a damp, soggy, you know, soggy damp mat, I would say, so you can clean your soldering iron tip. It's got to be soggy and matte. It's got to be deliciously soggy and you would need one of these that's satisfying but you need this to roughly clean your tip so it doesn't get all dirty don't go too hard on it r.i.p last starting right <laughs> okay let's just build it already on these well let's actually start from here we do not know, or basically I don't know where whatever or where to whatever goes. So we're gonna look here. It's not on here. 
So we're gonna look for the picture. Look for from the picture. I can see that this has a little black thing on the bottom. And you know what else has a black thing? This does. So you put these two on top. I would have rather cut it, but I'm not going to right now. What if I do it wrong? Nah, I won't. Push it into the holes there. Yeah, I can't do it. I gotta cut it. You could cut it with this. Requires a bit of strength. And glasses. Don't forget those. But I would rather use pliers, which I don't have right here. I'm sad. And you could just directly, without using any solder, plug this. No, without using any of this, you could just directly plug this into here. Get in there, boy. Well, I don't want to do that first. See the little holes there? They're in a pattern. This is also in a pattern. Bottom side. There you go. I can't see on the camera while I'm doing it, so I'm just going to plug it like this. And come on, get in there. Get in there. They don't get in there. Oh, they just did. Hmm. Check that all the pins are there, and one of them got bent. So I'm going to unbend it and plug it back. Come on. I know you guys can't see anything, but you basically gotta one by one, plug the parts in the places that you think it should go. And if you don't know what where a part goes, oh, this one bent again. Oh crap. If your pins bend like this a bit too much, it could break off and go. So your whole circuit board is basically trash. Yeah, let's just get in there. Get in there, you little weenie. Yes! No, I plugged it backwards. You gotta plug it into the unshiny side because the shiny side is where the, the solder goes. You melt it with this thing. Yeah, be careful. Do not touch that. RIP finger. Basically how it's done. You can see the little wires sticking out of there. If there's one missing wire, take the part out. I don't want to take it out. It was a struggle to take it back. And out. Anyway, take it out. Fix it and plug it back in. So now you got your first component in. This, These are actually called components. These little thingies that go through the holes. And we're going to do another one. Basically one by one plugging stuff in. Till you've got the whole stuff whole thing done now there's another thing which one should we do this one the integrated circuit IC for short what I do is plug these first oh no it's coming out I do plug these first and you can see they're in a pattern and you can see in the photo they're also in the part where the pattern was in here in real life Plug it in there. Be careful, there is a little nodge on the very end. It depends where it's going, but in this case, there's no marks on the actual board itself, so it's actually extremely hard to do this. This is not what you basically get, but but some of them. The reason why I do not put this on there and then solder it, because this could get hot, and then if it gets too hot, it's trash now. So, move these away, get out of here. I don't like these. Now let's out of this, turn it backwards. Make sure your stuff on the shiny side. Make sure your pins are in the correct order. Let's start, but my tip, it's not shiny. Oh no, no. So I'm gonna get my squishy thing. And then just do that until the whole tip is shiny. If it isn't, and you've done it for like two years now, it's still dull, not really shiny. You could put it there. 
you could get one of these, a utility knife. And to scrape the end off. Just go to the end with this. Be very careful. Scrape the end off. And if you do that for every single side, it should, just a second, it should be shiny again. And if it doesn't replace your tip, I'll show you how to later. Not really, actually. There's tutorials for how to replace your tip. Anyway, put this back in. This is more important than this thingy. Would you rather cut a finger or burn a finger? I would rather burn a finger, so this is what's more important. Anyway, I've got it better now. It's still worse, but, well, I've got to change my tip. How do I do this? Now, I got my sting my wire and make sure your soldering iron which is this machine this machine is at 400 degrees if you well you could do 350 degrees or 450 but 350 is a bit too less 450 is too much so 400 is perfect i'm just going to normally remove the other one because i feel like there's too much in there and do it one by one First check if it even does it. Yes, if it melts it. But normally it's supposed to stick on it. That is supposed to, this is supposed to stick onto the iron right there. But just because mine is not shiny, it doesn't stick. Be careful, this could get hotter. And if it gets hot, just extend it. Or leave it and then come back in two years. Not really. So when you melt this and then you try and do it, you melt it, you melt it, it's good. But it doesn't stick to the thing. What if it doesn't? Oh no, panic, emergency, whatever. You got this thing. Or flux. You could put this on the solder. The solder already has some if you bought it with it. But you can put it on the solder. I don't know if you can see it. And then solder it like that. Come on. There. Done. There is a lot of smoke here which you get rid of with the fan, which is not plugged in on my thing. But I would recommend you plug it in because it gets pretty darn bad here. Anyway, one by one, just do it. Patience, just like artwork. You get all of them right, just a second. You are good to go and good to use the other ones and plug them back in and stuff. The one rule. Don't put your soldering iron on the pin for too long. It could damage the component, and then basically your toy or whatever you're making is basically trash. So it's going to really quickly go over these. If two of these little knobs, I don't know if you can zoom in. If two of these, two of these, one of this, and the other one, for one reason, you did it wrong and then they just connect. What you can do is you could use something called a solder wick. I got a good one here that I kind of half used. And if you buy one of those and put it on top of the solder that you just melted, these, and then melt it, there should be smoke coming out. And if there's smoke coming out, you can pull away the solder wick. And the solder wick will have absorbed the solder and then we'll have like a shiny to it instead of this copper yellowish brownish color put that back now i've never used a solder wick only like a few times but that's basically the main rule and also it's supposed to be shiny on top when you're doing it and then when you take it away in a few seconds it will dry immediately but do not touch it it is going to be extremely hot so much smoke coming out. I'm done the first row. I'll show you now. It gets pretty dirty at the very end, like with a lot of solder wick. Not the wick, but the solder's flux. The solder does have some flux in it in this one. And that melts and then comes into our plate and it just looks terrible. So how you can fix that is by using a special pen. I think this is a, called a flux pen. Let me just get it out from here. It's called a flux pen. 
written in cursive. Mix it. Push it a few times. And you're good to go. You just go over it. And then somehow, like, acidity, I think, melts it. Yeah, it somehow melts it. And if your tip's getting dirty, flip it around. It's safe to touch. Wash your hands after. It is basically alcohol, so it could evaporate. Put the lid back on when you're done. And it's pretty clean. Well, it's a bit shiny because of the juice from this, but now let's I'm gonna do a bit more of this and then clean it. Where's my solder there? Let's do it. Yeah boy. I know you guys can't see this. I would love it if you guys saw this. Okay, clean it again. It would have been wonderful if I, if I could have somehow zoomed in to how cool this is. If you're actually interested in this, this is very cool. And if you're not interested, it's still cool. So you get to make something like, you know what I mean? Now plug the other one in where, it, oh, oh no, where it was supposed to go. Wrong. Solder it on the back. Now you do refer from here, I think, I think I used the right word, I'm not sure. You do go from here and check if there's a knob on which side. And if I look here, it's on this side. There's a little knobby. So when I finish plugging this one in, I'm gonna put this one to the correct one. This also has a knob as I showed you, but just cause I put this backwards, this one's supposed to be like that, right? No. Yeah, that's right. No, that's wrong. The other one was right. So this has a knob at that side. This doesn't matter which way it goes in, but just put in right orientation. This matters. This matters which orientation it goes in. This goes in the right place. It has a little indicator dot. It's a mark and a little knob on it. Not really a knob, it's like a mark. Never mind. Let's start with this. Too much solder, take it out. Too much solder, solder happens when it is more of a circle blob instead of a flat blob. A flat blob, well, it's, it's basically supposed to be even out surface, like even. More of a curve instead of a half circle. No? Oh my gosh, so much smoke coming into my face. Don't breathe that in. Destroys your lungs. Well, RIP lungs. Just normally trying to quickly do this. Oh no, some of the wires. Don't get in the wires. So you know on these little mark-shaped things, the color, if you get any solder on that, it doesn't matter because it isn't touching anything else. But if it touches a different one, just make sure to use your solder wick or something to push it off. If you're pushing it off and the color runs out, basically dead again. So use precaution. My pen again. We I love doing this. If you're out of it, you can push it in. There. Got it cool now. Looks clean. Da 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 da. -da. Now let's plug in this. This is a pretty easy plug-in. If I check the photo, I can slightly see that on this one, we're doing that one. Oh, let me use my pointer here. On this one, there are two here, because that's a bit longer, and this one's shorter, so this one should be one pin. Also, these are called pins, little metal knobs. I can see two there and one there. So let me put it in the right orientation, and that refers to, you can see the three dots here. Can you? Yeah, the one, two, three dots. You just put it in here. This is pretty easy to put in. This is my favorite component of all. It's a potentiometer. It adjusts something, you can twist it. See, I can, I can twist it mostly anyway. And it does hold itself up, so. I can easily put it and solder it from the back. Swoop, solder. 
solder and solder. Okay. Out of sync there. Do it. Whatever. Just gotta randomly move this up. Randomly do that. And it's about done. If there's nothing going on, like I did something wrong here, where while I was soldering, um, this got higher because I did it in a fake ish wrongish position. It doesn't matter which, if it's like sideways or not, but it only matters if the little pins are touching these, if they're perfect like this one. That's half perfect. This one's kind of bad. You can see there's a little hole in there. Can I use that the one? Come on, show it. Well, there is a hole in there. So I do have to solder that a little more because that I can see that has a bit less solder. Solder it up and no more hard coral, whatever. And it's good now. Pick another. Look from here, I can see that, let's do this big thing, wire adapter to nine volt. I can see that the black wire is closer to the little potentiometer. So I'm gonna put the black wire, wire on. Uh, I'm gonna check. Yes, it's the very last one here. So I'm gonna put the black wire here. I I'm not gonna let you see. I'm only gonna let you on a hot, hot iron on. Oh, and then the thing with this is if they're longer than usual and you need to make them stay somehow, bend it in different ways so one of them is bending down and one of them is bending up so it doesn't fall you can see it doesn't fall there's no editing here there kind of is don't let both of them touch while you're soldering no we got some work to do solder time solder 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 yeah, let's solder. Too much. Anyway, with my pliers, not really pliers, or scissors. Use your pliers, kids, or whatever you're watching. Yeah. They're short enough. They're perfect. Actually, properly do it. Close it. It'll dry on its own. Check here if it's bad or not. Nope, it's good. Is it right up to this point? Yeah, that's right. I just checked. Now, don't plug it in until you finished it, or there could be bad stuff happening. And if you're using it, and if anything like, let's say, this heats up or these heats up, like, like until the point where it's actually hot, not warm or even if it's warm, you really, really gotta unplug it. If anything's hotter than normal, like warm or even getting a bit hotter, unplug it directly. There should be a short circuit, which is basically, mm, how do I explain this? Which is basically putting both of these terminals together. These are terminal. Let me open my battery drawer and show you the battery. This is a nine volt battery. If you put both of these, this could get really hot and explode, which you don't wanna do. Don't plug this in, but I'm gonna plug it in anyway. To show you guys, only for like five seconds. And this just plugs in, you can take it out, plug it into the right one. So like if this is like a really good old circle, plug it into the other non good old circle. Eh. Plug. It's pretty hard to plunge. Now take it out, put it there. Um, let's do another one. What is this? What is this called? This is a capacitor. Where does it go? It goes here. My beautiful, lovely capacitor. Don't plug these backwards. I have run a test with my, at least I can't show you right now. This is covering it. With my um, power supply that I plug this backwards and I put a lot of volts in there, around 30. And yeah, 
it exploded like a bomb. Um, don't do that. If it gets hot, unplug it. Especially on these. And if it gets bad, it could just explode from the top. You can see it has a little mark where it will explode from those lines. Now let's check where it goes again. At the side of this. Zoom in. So that is properly oriented. Is the exact middle of that. So I'm not sure which order it goes in, but you can see it has a little mark here. This does matter if this is the plus and that's the minus or something. The short one's always the minus. The short one, the short pin is always the minus, and the long one is always the plus terminal. Um, positive, negative, and how you don't know, if you don't know, there's a little white strip, but the rest is black. The white strip, the closest little line to the white strip, is going to be minus. And even has a little minus symbol on there, like two, two or three, I'm not sure. Um, I do not know how it goes. And I can see that... Yeah, this is unreadable. This is not really a normal thing that... Oh, there it is. This is the thing I was looking. This is the thing that you try to look for. This is pretty rare. This is not really a common thing. There's a bit different ones than this. But you can see that this has a plus and that has a minus. So the minus is the one that's facing away of the board. So the minus is the one that's facing away. And the minus is the short one. So it's put in, facing away. Long one first. There. If you want, you could put it, instead of like this, you could put it a bit like that. So if you made a mistake, you can cut it, take it out, and then plug it in like that, if you ever made a mistake. But I'm gonna do it like that. If you want it to look cool, you could make all of them like this, or I would rather all of them at the exact same height, like that. I'm going to twist one of them, twist the other one other way. Swish it and solder them up. Oh no, I'm having some trouble. You could, you could hold it, but it's just incredibly painful to hold it. Nobody likes to hold it. That's why you need a second hand. That's what the pros call it. Oh no, I hate this. Ha ha, I got you now. There. No, it didn't stick. Did you stick now? I'll just put it here. It won't burn. Burn. Oh, uh, the other one? Other one? Come on. Come on, I can't reach it. There! Oh, that was hot. Yeah, that was my mistake. Don't touch it. That was my mistake. R.I.P. finger hole. I don't know. Bend them up. Crack them. Put your hand over it if you don't have glasses, or put on glasses. Okay, crack it. And, cracked. And, crack. Could you give me the pliers, please? These ones there. The dark blue ones. Thank you. Ghostly. No. Yeah, that's better. That one ended up on the ceiling. It's supposed to look like that. Now, overall, we didn't do the pen time. So let's do it. Do it everywhere. Everywhere and everyone. Yeah. I'm going to plug in my last thing. Not really the last, but you know what I mean. But before I plug it in, you could, if you plug it in, you could take it out, but... Check it again. Yes, it's facing the capacitor right there. It's fa the little knob is facing the capacitor. So the little knob on here is facing the capacitor. Plug in. Plug one side in. Plug the other side in, and then push. If you've even got it right on camera. Yeah, I got it wrong. Come on. There. It's like a little hat for it. The 
The circuit's the hat, and the holder's the buddy. It's like a little hat. It looks so cute. Yeah. Ooh, it looks good. Oh, my baby. I'm not gonna plug this one yet. I'm not. I need to find that again. Oh, so this is called a DISP. I'm not sure what it even means, but here it has a beveled edge. That's what they say. And the beveled edge is opposite from the plugger. So, beveled edge, find it right here. It's a really small beveled edge, smaller than I can even see. It's like barely ever visible, but I know it is on this side. And the bevel edge is opposite from there. So I am going to plug it in this way. 2,000 years later. Okay, I can't do it. Yes. Destroy. I'm known for destruction. Can you even hear me? Cut them all to basically the exact size. And then we'll get you find it. Where is it? It's opposite from that. It's on top. Oh, it's good. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's so satisfying. If you feel on your board that it's pretty sticky, put more of, of this. And if it doesn't ri get rid of it, then... Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. You got a really bad pen there. Um, it's on top now. It's plugged in. It's I cut it a bit long, so it still has that. But beveled edge, it's on the right side, right? Where is it? Yes, it's on the correct side. The beveled edge right here. Well, that's the beveled edge. Don't get it wrong. You could undo it because you can take it out. That's... That's why they had the little these bodies of the hat. But <laughs> um, also if your capacitor is small and you need to not take up space, you can bend it, but this is too um, big. So I can't bend it. Don't try bending any of these. If you bend them and unbend them too much, it could break. So this is called a resistor. It resists energy, yay. So on this one, it doesn't matter which order you put it in. On here, there are little tiny colors. You can barely read them with your own realistic eyes. Neither on camera, but, well, I've got a, thanks, ghost. I've got a little thing here. Can you even see with it? Mm. Yeah, there it is. It was hard adjusting. Now. Um, you can see there are a little five or even four. Yeah, four or maybe five, right? Four or five colors on here. If you don't want to take two years of your life trying to read this thingy, where is it? If you don't want to spend two years of your life trying to practice this and all that other nice stuff, you can go on your phone, go on an app. It's called a resistor band reader calculator. And it's basically like this. It says first band. Normal is black, but on this one, it doesn't matter which order you read it in. If it doesn't work one order, and if you read in one order, it's not in the list, read it backwards, then it should be in the list. If it's not, then you mix this one up with a different one, or it's a manufacturer's problem. Let's read it. The first one's orange. So I'm just gonna click on orange. You can see it's still there, it's orange. And the next one, it's white. So I click on band two. Yeah, there's on band two, and I click white. Band three is black, so I click on black, but I already clicked on it because it already opened with black, so band four, what color is it? This is very hard to understand, but it is gold. This is like bronzish color, you can't really see it. It could be red, gold, or silver on my things. Check it again. And if it's right, it says it here. 39 ohms, I think. I don't know. Does it have 39 here? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where? Where is it? 
Oh, it's on the other one. Okay, there it is. There it is. It has 39 here. See, calculated right, right under my finger, my thumb. It has 39. R1, that's R1. So if you find R1 on here, R1 is right on my finger, and that is the closest to disp. This thing. So that goes there. It doesn't matter which order you put in it, which one is that? It's this one. You bend it like it has little two legs, but it's missing the body and the arms. See? See? Little leg. And then put it through the hole. If I can even guess which way it even goes in. I'm gonna check again. Yeah. Okay, so it goes in. I'm just gonna plug it in because I can't show you while plugging it in. Put it in the same level as the capacitor because it looks nicer. It, this doesn't hold itself, so you two do have to bend them. And just because there's taller ones than this, it will not fall off. It will only fall off because of gravity, but gravity doesn't pull this much force. So, come on. Where's my thing? And plug. Done. Don't waste a lot of... Oh, no. Don't waste a lot of time putting their soldering iron too much. If it just gets shiny, take it out. Don't put it too much on these ones. That's why I left a little space there. So it doesn't get too hot. That's why I left it a bit higher. So it doesn't get too hot and burn and destroy itself. Oh, no, no, no. What if it doesn't work? That would be embarrassing. <laughs> it wouldn't. Yeah. This one, well, I have two. So let's check them with the capacitor reader. Band one. Band one, yeah. Which one am I gonna read? This one. This one has red on the first one. Violet, I think. Is that blue or purple? That's purple. That's hard to read. Blue and purple are hard to read. Band two, band three. What's on band three? Brown, there. Band four is, what's that, gold. That's two, 270. I know I read 270 here, because I can remember, and that, it says 270. Where is it, here? You even read that? I don't know, but it does say 270, and there it has R2 for 270. So where does R2 go? To the very edge. To the where the beveled edge is on the DISP. So it's this one. I'll just plug it in. Nope, not this one. Yeah, this one. Make a little like a man. Put it in. Can't put it in. Oh no, it's too much. Crack it. And solder it up. Don't forget this, but you do gotta use your, oh no. You do, you gotta use your plier, what's this called? It says use safety glasses. Well, if I don't look, it won't hurt. Cut them off. They, one, one, one time, one of them flew into my, like, to the corner of my eye. It was such a pain to get it out, so. Now, every once in a while, like every half an hour, um, clean your place up. But if you're standing, you could just throw the stuff on the floor, wear some mittens for your foot, whatever it's called. And every 30 minutes, you could sweep your floors and then it'll look brand new. Anyway, I'm just gonna throw this to the side. And I know there's only one left, and there's only one slot left for this. The moment we've all been waiting for. The last component. Is there any dots left? No, it's not. So I know this one's supposed to be the last one, because I don't need to check, you know, math. Plug it into the right holes. Find the pattern, plug it into the right holes. Um... Do it, do the thingy, solder it on, do the syrupy thingy. Those two are supposed to be connected. If you're not sure if 
two dots are supposed to be connected like this one. I wasn't sure. Like, if two of these. I can't show you. This camera is terrible. I'm using, like, an iPhone 12. iPhone 12. Anyway, um, you can refer to here. Foil pattern of a PC board. Yes, this is a PCB. PCB. A PC board is a PCB. It's actually called a PCB. It's this green thing. And it shows here, yes, these two do connect. So they do connect, yay! I cut them off. Now let's use... Come on. Fail. Yeah. Now let's clear it up. Yeah. Push it in. Everything is soaked now. That's a terrible, no, a wonderful disaster. No, oh, it didn't go again. No, it's broken. Wah. Clean it up. Here it is. A moment. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, let's plug it in. I'm scared. If it doesn't work, I'll be really sad and nervous now. Bum, 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 oh, it works, that's so cool, oh, I love that, if there is no button, it should work right when you plug it in, oh, that's so cool, it has a little light there, and I can change it, oh, no, I can change it, it is like the speed, it's going so fast, and I can slow it down very slow, it's a pretty cool toy to play with, and when you're basically done, you play for it like five minutes, and then it goes in the I'm done, my circuits folder. So we've done the building. I'm going to put this somewhere so I can show you. It's still cool. It's still running. It will run until the battery's gone. Oh, no, one of the components explode. So how you finish up is, well, we're, we're done our circuit. It's still working right here. It's pretty cool. And, well... If it doesn't work, and if it doesn't come with a battery adapter, you can plug this into some wires, and the end will go to your DC power supply, which you can plug in oh no, using these alligator clips, and then turn it up to the voltage that it says to. This one has 9 volts, because I can see that this battery is a 9 volt, but it would say on the PCB, not a PCB board, because the B is already in there. Never mind, how to clean up. First, so this is how I clean up. If I look around, I see which ones are the quickest that I can think of of where to put. So when I look at this, I know that I can wind this up really quickly and put it in the place that it's supposed to go really fast. Do those quickly. So if you know how, where to put this, you just put it in the correct bin slash aisle slash whatever i know where to put this right in there i think i know what to do with these they basically go in trash right now because i'm done with the board but if you want more you can just these go in trash I'm not really going to clean it up in front of you but this is my phone it goes in somewhere this goes in my bin this goes in the magnetic board I have somewhere. I showed it to you, I think, in my first video. This goes in the same bin that I put my flux. Come on. This goes in the magnetic board again. Next goes. <laughs> this goes in the same place I found it from. These, this little dampener thing, you can squish it, take the juice out, and put it in the place that it really you found it from. So if you got this from your bins, you can put it back in the bin. If you found this from your bin, you can put it back. Number one thing. Oh no, soldering iron. It's not really good. Turn your soldering iron off. Like, off. If it doesn't have a button, it should say off. If it doesn't, it's a different iron. Um, when it says off, put it on top of the heating whatever thing. Unplug it, which I'm not doing right now. Um, is there anything else? Put these in the actual place it's supposed to go. Put your camera back. Duh. I'm recording right now. No. 
If you're done with this, take the battery off. Come on, get off there. Take the battery off. Be cautious with this. Don't burn yourself like I did with my other attempts. No, this is my first attempt. Never mind. Put this in your battery bin. If you have a little battery checker. Oh, no. I spun. I got a little battery checker here. I can check my batteries. And if they're bad, this one is actually good because it says good. So I'm going to put it back in the original place. Put my thing back. And if you actually did everything I just told you to, um, it wouldn't look something like this. You would clean up all this mess. This goes in the trash, right? No, it goes in the recycle, wherever it goes. Um, and that's about it. So thank you for, thank you so much for watching my good old third video. Yeah, third video. And I'll see you in my next video. And don't be too excited because who knows what we're learning next. I think we're making an even harder version of one of these PCBs. PCB boards. Anyway, so see you later. Goodbye.